In this video, we're gonna level up our dungeon maps by making them change dynamically. This video is brought to you by my Patreon, where I make monthly tabletop role-playing game adventure zines. Each zine is filled with everything a dungeon master needs to run a great one-shot adventure. They have tons of illustrations and maps just like the one I'm gonna be illustrating in this video. This month's adventure is called Flick Silverpin's Guide to the Fiery Caldera. It's an underground lava lake dungeon filled with a bunch of crazy NPCs and dangerous monsters. And I've been making a lot of underground adventures because all of these zines for the past few months can be run as one shots, but also string together into a campaign leading adventurers further down underground till eventually they will meet the darkness below. Now, even though all these adventures take place underground, I've been working very hard to make each zine feel wildly different and varied. And with this fiery caldera environment, I've discovered a new trick to make the map and the adventure even more interesting. So I thought I'd bring you along on my thought process and show you what I've figured out. So we're jumping into Photoshop where I will be illustrating this map. And as you can see, I have my initial sketch on a layer with the transparency turned down so I can sketch right over top of it. So I've already written out this adventure. So I have all of the rooms of this dungeon already listed out. And now I've made this sketch, which is just a circle for a room and then connecting it with hallways. Nothing fancy, just something to kind of get the basic layout of this dungeon figured out and onto a piece of paper or in this case, a Photoshop file. So I use a custom brush for all of the artwork I do in these zines. It's nothing fancy, just a little bit of texture on a normal round brush. And I'm using it to draw the craggy cavernous outlines of these rooms and hallways, the lava tubes of the fiery caldera. And as I'm going, I'm trying my best to jackway, I think is the term. I'm probably saying that very wrong. This dungeon, I'm going to put a link down to my friend Kyle AKA Map Crow. His, he does an awesome video on this concept. Definitely check it out, but basically it's just the idea of connecting rooms in multiple ways. And that just encourages exploration and gives players the feeling of exploring and making choices in navigating typically confined spaces like dungeons. And this idea really combos great with a living dungeon like these underground lava tubes. I like to make dungeons where the NPCs and monsters are all doing their thing regardless of if the players are there or not. So having ways for them to bump into each other and cause problems in multiple ways makes the dungeon more fun for the players and also more interesting for dungeon masters to run and have fun with too. So I've got the outline done, but it's actually very difficult to see what's going on here in this dungeon. I have it all planned out and can tell what's going on in my head, but visually it doesn't work yet. So so because this dungeon is way, way, way deep underground where there's lava, I'm gonna fill the background in with a solid black. You can always do some sort of texture or add color, just something to differentiate solid underground space where there's rocks and stuff where people can't go and the empty spots of the dungeon where people can go. And as you can see, this drawing is not complicated. I know I say this all the time, but you really don't need any drawing ability to illustrate a cool looking dungeon map like this. It just takes a little bit of planning and then drawing a bunch of squiggly lines. But I guess I am doing a few extra things to make the map uh, a little bit more clear. So the first thing is I'm adding a grid to just sort of show some scale and reinforce the idea that these empty white areas are the places the players can walk. And when you're playing Dungeons and Dragons and you see a grid, everybody knows that that's where your players are supposed to be moving around and exploring. I'm just laying a grid texture in in Photoshop, but you could totally draw a map like this on grid paper and you don't even have to worry about that part. And the other thing I'm doing is adding in the lava area just by making a solid gray 
blob, I guess. Since the insides of these zines are black and white, I'm keeping the lava gray, but I will color it later as well to have a nice digital map for the patrons. Now, because I'm making this dungeon usable for other dungeon masters, and of course, the numbers correspond with descriptions of what's gonna be in the rooms, each of these areas of the dungeons have some sort of fun encounter or an interesting NPC. There's a rock goblin merchant, there's a frustrated steam elemental. There's a bunch of ember trolls that are up to no good. And there is the ancient one, a giant magma tortoise that lives in the lava lake, the, the actual fiery caldera lava lake. And that brings me to my trick. The new thing that I figured out to make dungeons extra interesting and dynamic. So in this dungeon, the lava lake raises and lowers. And that seems like a really simple thing, but it adds a lot of complexity, not only to exploring the dungeon, but also how the creatures in the dungeon interact with each other. So I've made a copy of the map, and now I'm just erasing some of the lava to sort of shrink it down back into the actual lake. Just doing a little bit of redrawing and receding the lake out of a few of these rooms. So basically what happens is this ancient one, the giant magma tortoise, when it goes into the lava and swims around and stuff, it makes the lava overflow from the lake and spread out into these rooms. And then when the tortoise gets out, the lava recedes back into the lake. And really when I was first thinking about this dungeon, it was just a, a lava lake in the middle of it and the big magma tortoise was hanging out there and the lava didn't move at all. But then I was playing the newest, it's, it's not new anymore, but it just came out on PC, the new God of War game. And I guess this is maybe light spoilers. There's a point where you come to a big lake and there's this massive creature called the world serpent and you talk to it and basically it like comes out of the lake a little bit and then the lake goes down and it reveals all these new places that you can explore in the game. And actually there's also a giant turtle thing in that game too. But my giant turtle is a reference to another thing entirely. Maybe you can tell what it is based on uh, me calling it the ancient one. But anyway, the point is having the environment react to some sort of creature or something going on in this adventure makes these caves feel like a real living place. And it also has some gameplay consequences as well. You know, what happens when the players are exploring these lava tubes and all of a sudden a wave of lava starts flowing at them and they gotta scramble to get out of the way. Or reversely, what happens when the lava recedes back into the lake and now there's these new places to explore? What can the players find in these uncovered areas? And as the dungeon master, you can also describe what happens not only to the environment, but the other creatures in this area when the lava moves in and goes back out. How do they react to this changing environment? Okay, so now I am coloring this map, just adding a little bit of color because I'm not gonna make a lava map and not have some bright orange lava on this thing. Like I said, in the zine, it's gonna be black and white, but I will also include uh, this digital version with the full lava color. And I should say that even though I'm drawing this on the computer and it's easy for me to just copy the map and change things super quickly, if you're drawing your own dungeon map by hand, which I highly, highly encourage, you don't necessarily have to make a full new copy and redraw the whole thing. You could just make a cutout on a separate sheet of paper and lay that down on top. So like the lava could be its own cutout when it's raised up that you put down and then when it recedes, you take that second piece of paper off. You know, there's lots of fun ways that you can experiment with making your own actual drawn by hand maps. And I guess if you've ever made a map or run an adventure that has this sort of dynamic environment thing going on, leave it in the comments because I would love to hear some more ideas about how to make more interesting maps. And yeah, let me know what you think of the Fiery Caldera map. If all of this sounds super interesting to you, go check out the Patreon. It's linked down in the description. I super appreciate you checking out this video and hearing me ramble about making maps. It's just, it's my favorite thing to do and I hope you love it too. 
All right, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!